Charlie Rangel couldn't get a deal. The New York congressman faces 13 charges brought yesterday by the House Ethics Committee. His lawyers had been trying to work out something to avoid a trial, but they failed. Negotiations are still ongoing, but so far, no luck. CBS News investigative correspondent Cheryl Atkinson joins me here now with the latest. Cheryl, let's just start with what the 13 charges are. What is Charlie Rangel accused of? They're basic counts that fall into various categories, including failing to disclose proper financial disclosures of income, stocks, um, rental properties, and so on. Number two, misusing a rent subsidized, a set of rent subsidized apartments in New York for campaign offices. And thirdly, a lot of the charges surround alleged improper fundraising that he did for a pet project in his name called the Wrangell Center at City College in New York. How much in terms of the improper reporting? I mean, was it a couple of nickels and dimes, or did he get into real money here? The allegations are hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not more. Uh, when we reported on, on that part of it last year, we found that he had failed to report, I believe it was two checking accounts worth up to a million dollars apiece that he simply had not put in on his financial disclosures at all, and an array of stocks and properties over the years that he went back and corrected in retrospect once this investigation started. So these. This is not pennies, and a lot of Americans will have a hard time understanding how someone can forget about or leave off hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars in assets on their financial disclosures. A reminder, he was at the time head of the lead tax committee in the House, and these are infractions for which if ordinary Americans conducted them, they would be in a lot of trouble potentially. So part of the outrage factor is that he should know better if he's now saying, I simply made mistakes or I relied on somebody else, which is part of his defense, to fill out these forms. Um, a lot of people aren't buying that. They're saying you should know better. Right. Those are the kinds of excuses people use when they don't pay their taxes. Right. Tell us about using his office and, and this charge that he used the power of his office to get what he wanted. Well, I'll start with his defense because he acknowledges that he may have improperly used public resources, his staff, congressional um, franking privileges, in other words, not having to pay personally for postage, and so on. Um, he just says he didn't know better. It was sort of a mistake using congressional stationery, congressional letterhead. The problem is he sent out solicitation letters asking for huge amounts of money from corporations that had business before his committee for his Wrangell Center, for his personal charity that he had an interest in. And um, he used congressional stationery. A lot of people think you're kind of strong arming the donor when you send out as head of the Ways and Means Tax Committee these requests for massive amounts of money. And, he, and according to the documents, he would sometimes send a letter afterwards if the donor said no. The letter would say, I'm extremely disappointed that you couldn't help out. And this, too, on congressional stationery. Um, a couple of quick examples. According to the documents released yesterday, he sent letters to 100 foundations, including the ones for J.P. Morgan, Citibank, Merrill Lynch, Goldman Sachs, Bristol Myers. Um, he asked for $30 million, according to these documents, from Verizon and New York Life. $30 million. That's a huge request for these people. Yeah. Wow. Um, so now, there wasn't a deal, but, but there's one still potentially being negotiated in some fashion, but, but, the, tri but the proceedings are already ongoing. What's, where are things like? Well, from what we understand, a deal could still be possible, a settlement. And it's, it's been reported today or said by members of the investigative committee that they were looking at, despite these many pages of documentation they have of infractions, a potential reprimand for him, which is the mildest form of punishment that he could get that would go, have to go to a full House vote. Um, now that these details have been released, and you can find the charges and Congressman Rangel's answer on our website, now that all of this is out there and it's so specific, and it, it really looks bad, even if he does have a defense that there's not nothing criminal here, um, I didn't know better, it still looks so bad. I think it's harder for, for him to escape with a reprimand settlement than it would have been you know, prior to these charges being read yesterday. That's right. A reprimand, just to remind people, was what Congressman Joe Wilson was reprimanded for yelling out, you lie, right. uh, during the president's uh, speech in the well of the House. So it's kind of a, uh, on that order. And as you point out, that's that's a uh, quite small, considering what has just been dumped here yesterday. Well, just so people know, um, there's a general opinion I learned when I worked on Capitol Hill that the House and Senate ethics committees are not terribly aggressive in going after their own. Remember, these are members policing one another. It's uncomfortable. One of them said so in, in the hearing yesterday. Nobody likes policing another member. This investigation was started when Congressman Rangel defiantly asked for the investigation into himself two years ago, and they said they really didn't like the task of doing it. Um, so it's pretty hard to get a strong 
um, punishment out of these committees when you consider that they're looking at each other. There have only been uh, six expulsions from the House and Senate since the Civil War era. It's pretty hard, despite a lot of criminals that have behaved in Congress over the 150 years that we know of after the Civil War, it's pretty hard to get expelled um, from Congress, and even if the charges are quite serious. So as a last question, help us out here. If this, if this doesn't go to trial, if Charlie Rangel does try and work out a deal, which his fellow Democrats would really like, they don't want to have this conversation every day from now until the election, um, how would it have to work in the committee uh, in terms of the votes for him to, if he, if he were to work out a deal, um, how, how, would that, how would the committee handle that? The way they described it yesterday, the process, it's, there's an even number of Democrats and Republicans on this adjudicatory committee, which is separate from the investigators who looked at the charges. A different group of members will look at what the punishment ought to be, and they kind of start from scratch looking at the evidence. They're evenly split. It would take, from what they described, at least one Republican and all the Democrats to agree to some sort of settlement. Um, what Democrats would really want, though, is for all of the Republicans to be on board in a settlement, because otherwise it, it would kind of look bad. It would look like a partisan type of thing. Right, and, the, and I think even the chairman of the uh, committee has said, I want all Republicans. She wants so unanimity she have... for this. Right. right. Okay. Cheryl, thanks so much. You're welcome.